What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Steven. This is Steven in Stereo. In today's video, we are checking out Olivia Rodrigo's Guts album just released today. I'm so stoked to check this out. Make sure you guys smash like on the channel if you like the video. Also subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. I've also got Patreon, which I will be doing a full uncut album listening party slash reaction to this um album it'll actually be up already if you're seeing this on youtube that's over there along with the sour album which i did a full uncut album reaction to as well as sour prom and olivia rodrigo's uh little documentary that she did so i've got all that over on patreon and always adding more so again if you want to check out the full uncut like raw video of this over on patreon but with all the things out of the way i'm looking forward to this i think olivia rodrigo came out so strong with sour and the two singles that have come off of Guts have essentially taken that same spirit of that album, but kind of like enhanced it a little bit more, like put a little bit more umph into it. She really doubled down on the whole sort of like alt rock, 90s rock sort of vibe. So I'm really looking forward to this. This first song that we're checking out is All American Bitch. Jokes about senseless cruelty, that's for sure. I just love her vocal range so much, um, especially when like you've you've heard the singles off this, especially like Bad Idea Right and stuff. So to just hear the range in which Olivia kind of like works in is awesome. Ooh, love all of that. I love those harmonies right there. Oh, this is exactly what I was hoping to hear in this album was really her utilizing all of those soundscapes that she's able to use. And so to hear it go from this like, you know, cute, like summer kind of vi like vibe thing all the way dropping into that alt rock. Love it. So fucking sick. Dude, I fucking love that she's doing this. Okay, this is fucking sick. Great way to start this album, showing that blend of all the different styles she's able to do. But one thing I really want to touch on really quick is just like, I'm so happy that her follow-up album is already going harder than Sour did because it's hard sometimes whenever you top a lot of charts in a lot of different genres to not double down on the one that you know. Like if she went straight just for like the pop genre, she do amazing. We know that she could double down on that sound, but to actually keep that versatile style moving into, you know, various pieces and still topping those charts, but doing it on multiple levels now, that's fucking sick. And just the start of this is just incredible. So we already know bad idea, right? I already know vampire. I'm not going to do those because I have long videos of both of those already on the channel. Um, so this next track is Lacey. Eyes wide as daisies Did I ever tell you that I'm not doing well? Fuck. You know, I love that, like, indie storyteller type of vocal that she has. Again, another one of the things she can do. It sounds so great here. Daisies Did I ever tell you that I'm not doing well? Ooh, I care, I care. See, I'm Wait, is that why it sounds? Hold on, I just want to see in the credits if there's someone else in this song. No, what? That's crazy. See, I love that too. Like, she, you know, she's layering her own vocals and stuff, which is fucking amazing, right? It just works so well. But one of the other things too is like this whole second piece right here. I could have fooled me that this was an entirely different singer, um, and I love that she can do that. <laughs> Try, I try, I try, try 
Oh my god. This is giving me um it's got this very big feeling of it's like as you're listening to it, you can feel that atmosphere really coming together. I feel lost in this. It almost feels like I'm sort of like out in in the universe and just kind of like you feel it coming from every angle. So really great production on that too. And she just has this very like I can't I can't find the word for it to give enough credit for what her voice does sometimes where she can just like grab a hold of your mind and like take you on a journey and it just sounds so fucking beautiful dude so many layers to this right here I just, again, there's just something, God damn. And it's like, as long, like the longer that she's doing this, like this is only her second release. Um, but like, you can tell those vocal refinements just from sour to now. It's not just, you know, double doubling down on any kind of genre or anything, because yeah, I would have thought that with the first three tracks, but this track really shows that other side of Olivia. And I think that's one of the things that's so beautiful about like her career is that, you can listen to the song and there's a lot of atmosphere. It really is space-like almost. And I think that when you can take somebody, put headphones on them and essentially like put them into your story where you're getting to fucking feel it. Like I could feel it and I could like hear the separation of her vocals. And then when it would come to this next section, we'd have stacks of layers. You could just hear so much happening in that instrumental and all of that comes together and it sounds beautiful. But it works really well because her vocals can do the same fucking thing. It's amazing to me. Okay, this is Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl. Fuck yes! Dude. So many cool fucking like pop punk elements in this, including just that whole last line. Oh man, that chord progression! Yes! I love that. She just said, uh, called you the wrong name twice. I can't think of a third line, like breaking down that like fourth wall so that like she's writing the song, but then also like commenting on writing the song while writing the song. It's fucking sick. Totally love the composition of this. I love the writing style of this. I will say, trying to think about the lyrics here, I don't know that Olivia was homeschooled, but I know that I can understand what kind of social like anxiety issues could arise from that when you don't have a lot of practice. It's one of the benefits about being in public school, or at least around a lot of people growing up, is that you learn how to be social. I moved schools a lot, therefore I didn't really make a lot of friends each time, and so it's really awkward to be the new kid all the time. So I can definitely vibe with some of the social issues that Olivia was running into as well here. And again, I also love like just the personality of breaking that fourth wall and like, you know, couldn't think of a third line. La la la. Like that's so fucking cool to me. Okay. This next track is making the bed. Forced to be a sign. But sometimes I feel like I 
Oh. Okay, so I love this because this perspective, you know, people said you made your, you made your bed, now you lie in it. So the bed that you sleep in is the one that you made. And so she's essentially like giving us this narrative of the life that she's living now and, and the circumstances that she's in and, and the fair weather friends and all these things and how she ended up in that situation. At the end of the day, she may not like it, but she knows that she is the reason for it. Oh, I love that. I got the things I wanted. It's just not what I imagined. It's just proof that people always look at situations like maybe like with celebrities, people that are very famous and it's very easy to just write off anything that they may be going through because they have all the money. Right. And, and sometimes people forget that like, no, nah, they're still human. Like money was created. It's this construct. It doesn't, it's not going to change um, the type of struggles that you go through. They're just different. Um, but I think sometimes we get so caught up in being someone else that we forget that like, they're probably going through the same shit that we are. They may just have more money, which could be nice, but still, they still have the same problems. Oh, fuck yes. See, another thing that I guess another thing that I could kind of like grab at the end of that, too, is that it's possible that the song could be about um, like perspective also, where she says like all these things are kind of going on and and she's like getting so like worked up about being the victim in the situation instead of just realizing that it's the choices that are being made that determine like what's going on, but it's how I choose to react to that situation. That's going to define how I feel about this. So I guess like a different perspective of the song could be like the situations that you're looking at. Are you looking at them in a positive way or in a negative way? I still believe that it's the original thought that I have about this, which is like, we have to realize sometimes that there's choices that need to be made in our lives to get us out of the situation that we're in. So we own up to the fact that we're making the bed that is causing us to be so miserable. What do we do to change that? Okay, this next track is called Logical. Put myself through hell for you Hear all the rumors lately That you always deny That's really hard to be in a, in a relationship like that where you know, you think the world of this person, you speak so highly about them, even if you don't always necessarily like believe it. Or even if you do, like, even if your mind's like, no, that's not true. And you're in your head like, yeah, well, he would never do that to me. She would never do that to me. Um, and it's so hard to be in that position where you just like unwillingly love somebody so much, but like they're probably being sketchy on the side. And I fell for you like water. It out if I try, but you convinced me, baby. It was all in my mind. See, and that shit right there is sketchy. To have somebody who is like, I mean, I know she was saying it from like a positive perspective here, like, oh, like being worried about something and you're giving me that hope. But there's also the other side of it where like if you're that good at if you've got the hold over somebody and you are like maybe sketchy or doing shit, um, you're gonna make me believe that it's probably my fault that I believe those things. Gaslighting. And now you got me thinking two plus two equals five. And I'm the love of your life. Cause if rain don't pour and sun don't shine, and changing you is possible. Mm. No love is never logical. Yeah, I definitely what I was feeling about this track, uh, the chorus sums that up right there. Like you've got me believing that two plus two is five. Like all it takes is just one note like that to let you like know everything. Like good, this person's so good that they can convince me that the wrong thing is correct. You built a giant castle with 
Oh, can I just say that, like, for all the the amount of, like, love I have for the 90s alt rock fucking you name it, all that shit. Like, as much as I love that style of Olivia, it's hard to beat her in a ballad. Uh, that's all I'm saying. It's fucking oh, so good. Dude, you hear that, like rasp coming in her voice right there like so much emotion coming up fuck That right there, beautiful example of Olivia Rodrigo's fucking just absolute vocal takeover that she has. Like, I mean, I, she was literally singing into my ears at that moment. It's it's so beautiful to hear. And any artist that is this talented vocally and then decides to layer their own vocals. You guys, if you've been watching the channel a long time, know I'm fucking obsessed with that. I love the song because even at the end, she says like, I know that I was part of the problem. Like I'm half of the issue because that is true in a lot of relationships. And that doesn't mean that like, oh, that person should leave. But because they don't, they deserve that. That's never the case. So if it is harder for people, especially when there's jobs and kids and all those things that are involved in the relationship as well, you can't just leave. It's a lot harder. But that is true that if you could walk away from these obviously toxic um, partners that people have, it would be amazing. But sometimes it's you don't know until it's too late. And in this case, Olivia really like gave everything to this person, really loved and believed in this person and all these things. And this person found a way to make her feel stupid about everything and make her feel like she was never going to be good enough. Um, and I just love the like very specific call outs. It just, I love the descriptive shit because it adds so much personality to these songs. Again, her with a ballad, you just can't beat that. Okay. This next track is called get him back. I think that's how you know it's good. It's like, I already got all these red flags, but then when he says something that makes me mad, rather than, you know, fixing it, he just flies me to France. Here we go. Okay, I will say, I don't know from the verse... But I think with this chorus, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be totally surprised to see this end up as a single. The verse is a little bit hard. It's not typically what you would hear for like a like a radio hit. But the chorus is so well written to be a single that I kind of feel it coming. I also kind of love this. Like she's obviously in a relationship with somebody who it, it wasn't a great relationship. He was pretty toxic. Um, he had a wander, wandering eye. He didn't know how to deal with the issues that he would create. But then also like he was giving her this like really great party kind of life. And so she's like, yeah, I feel a little depressed and a little chill sometimes. So I do miss having him here for those reasons. That's another toxic thing is she's saying like, maybe I can get him back. Maybe, maybe I can just fix him. I can fix all these issues that are wrong with him. I think we do that a lot. Like, especially like growing up when you're younger, you like find somebody that you think is perfect, but obviously they're not. Cause if they were, you wouldn't feel the need to want to change them. Um, so if they are changeable, then they're probably not perfect. Right. But if you are getting into that relationship going, yeah, they do all these things that I really love, but they also do these, like this, like one thing that is a huge red flag. <laughs> I can, I can fix them. I can make them love. I can make them all these things. It never is a good situation. I 
wanna break his heart and be the one to stitch it up. I love that. You could just tell the personal conflict she's having with this. I want to make him feel awful and love him at the same time, or at least break his heart and then be the one that gets him back to fix it. This is not a good situation. Wanna kiss his face with an It's a very well written song. Yeah, you got to get him back. Hey, I'm I'm a fan of this. This is definitely going to be a single. I can feel it now. I Really love, well, I really hope they do make it a single and they do it quick because like cold air is coming and this feels like a summer banger. Like it definitely feels like that back to school summer like hit right here. Olivia just does such a great job of putting together a, a, a sound that I was just like so infatuated with in the 90s and early 2000s. And to hear her bring it back in the way that she's doing it with her own twists on it is really cool. The entire composition of the song is sick. I'm really a fan of the lyrics. I like that sort of like personal struggle that we have and anybody who's been in a relationship that ended has been in this situation where like you know the person wasn't right for you but like there's things about them that you miss and then you kind of find yourself juggling back and forth with well he's such a dick but at the same time i like watching movies with him like it's so you go through this like personal fucking like struggle with yourself and i love that she was able to just like pin that to paper and make it like something so relatable which is exactly what i would expect from her okay this next track is love is in so this kind of goes back to logical right where like you're so in love with somebody that what they do has a direct impact on your emotional state and that's a really tough place to be in so even in this situation this guy decides that he wants a break so she's in her bed miserable waiting by her phone which we've all been there waiting for that other person because it's like we've given them every single ounce of power when it comes to how we feel emotionally about like her like pop rock inspiration that she brings in is that one of the things that comes best out of like pop rock and pop punk it's those melodies and those melodies are they're so present on the chorus of this i love it i fucking love it i fucking love it so much these songs are just put together so fucking well and I, like I, of course they are right sour is such a great album so like you're following up on this like record smashing album and you're in my opinion you're doing it justice you're bringing that sound you're bringing it with refinements you're doubling down on some of it you're you know cleaning up pieces of it and like a song like love is embarrassing pretty much encapsulate encapsulates everything i love about olivia rodrigo's career into one song and that's just one piece of this album like how fucking cool is that I think about the damage that you did but i hold on to every detail like my life depends on my undying love now i hold it like a crush. i don't know if this is going to end up being a ballad although it kind of sounds like it just from that air from that section but that is like this is such a strong point for olivia rodrigo is this like almost like spoken word storytelling that she does but it has melody it's fucking awesome damage that you did but i hold on to every detail like my life depends on it my i don't feel strong <sighs> It takes strength to forgive, but I don't feel strong. It takes strength to forgive, but I don't feel strong. The arguments that I have won against you in my head, in the shower, in the car, and in the mirror before bed. Yeah, I'm so tough when I'm alone. And I'll make you feel so guilty. And I'll fantasize about a time you're a little fucking sorry. And I try to God damn it. I fantasize about a time when you're a little fucking sorry. Guilty. This shit right here is just proof that like you, all you have is yourself. You have to find a way to make yourself happy because I don't want anyone to have to feel as fucking sad and like angry with yourself and everything as Olivia feels with some of these tracks. Like it is such a fucking terrible way to feel. And I feel for her right now. I've tried for so long. But I don't feel strong. Fuck. 
Oh my god. Dude, the vulnerability. Oh my god. See, I think this is one of the things that... Um, like, definitely Olivia, I'm thinking there's like... There's a certain movement that has been more and more popularized in music. And that is just absolute soul-crushing vulnerability. And Olivia Rodrigo, is she's not the first to do it, but... She has definitely like had some really big tracks with that sound. And I think the reason that that style is so popular, I'm also a fan of it, is that it, it truly delivers that experience of sitting in a room with somebody and them just telling you the heartbreak that they're going through, the emotional journey that they're going through. When you can sort of like take away the the like commercial songwriting aspect of it, where like this song is going to be this major hit and all these things. If you were to like get rid of all of that and just sit in a room with the person playing that song, that is what comes through when, when you have a track like the grudge here, where you're having somebody tell you their story and you can tell that the emotion and the vulnerability is so real from Olivia here. Um, it almost sounds like it's like a studio session where it's like, we're not trying to get perfected. Um, like, harmonies and all these things no i just want you to play the song coming from the heart and that's what this sounds like and to be able to capture that in the studio and put that on a record and have that same sort of feeling it's why i think that this kind of style is becoming more and more popular it's like indie songwriter acoustic driven sometimes there's just a lot of emotion there and it's fucking a, oh it's such a beautiful thing even if it hurts okay pretty isn't pretty Same. You know, this is so fucking real. Um, it doesn't matter what age you are. This is something that unfortunately we all struggle with. Even if we say that we don't, we are there's a, you know, the, the saying is like, we are our own worst critic. And that is absolutely true. Someone can walk by you and say, oh my God, you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Don't ever change a single thing about you. Cool. And then we look in the mirror and we're like, oh man, I shouldn't have ate those donuts or man, I should, I really need to fix my hair or I really need to do this. You can't ever just look in the mirror and be like, wow, you look great. Congratulations. And we're all guilty of it. And I love that openness that vulnerability again and then you get right there and it's like what do you do whenever pretty isn't pretty to me like what am i supposed to do in that situation that's another harsh one pretty isn't pretty enough where it's like oh i'm pretty yeah but hmm that's not enough you gotta be hot you gotta be extravagant you got to be all these things it's like no like we need to see what other people see in us you know fuck yes Oh, that bass right there. I think it's just, it just goes without saying. Like, I love that she is talking about this because so many people struggle with this. Uh, it's one of those most frustrating things. And like, it turns out that it doesn't matter what your 
perspective of how someone looks or any of those things, it turns out that it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they're only going to think about what they see. And what do you do when you compare yourself to everybody? It's easy to say, well, you should just, you know, be you because you're your own individual you. And that is very true. But sometimes telling somebody that isn't the same as like teaching them how to see themselves differently. But it's really hard whenever you're, you know, constantly being compared to every other person everywhere in media, magazines, the news, social media, all these things. There's always something that's going to help you get to the perfect version of you. But you all by yourself, you're absolutely beautiful. But it's hard to see that sometimes. And I love the vulnerability. I love her sharing that piece of her story with us because, you know, from the outside, you would never think those things. But then you know that as a human, of course you think those things. Okay, the last track is Teenage Dream. Okay, really fucking cool um, because, again, we're talking about vulnerability. Um, this is a real thing that people have to go through, uh, and that's just for the normal person. But then think about somebody. It's Olivia Rodrigo. She's fucking massive. Like, she's she is a household name. But when you do things in your younger years, you you do have that problem where, like, I need people to stop looking at me like a kid and respect me for the things that I do, not for how old I am. So, okay, you get past those things, but then you've got this other thing, this other demon that's going to be working inside of you that's going to constantly say, are you going to be as good as you were when you were a teenager? Are you going to be able to keep topping this? You made all this success at such a young age. What do you do? How do you, like when you're not a teenager anymore, are you still going to have that same level of success? And it doesn't matter if the answer is yes or no. It's it goes right back to pretty isn't pretty. It's that voice in your head that's kind of like taking over. And when this wide-eyed affection and all good intentions start to not be enough, then will everyone have every reason to call on my bluff? Be your teenage dream. Fuck. They all say that it gets better. It gets better. Okay, I love this as a massive fan of Lana Del Rey. I love whenever you get these like like super high notes that sort of like you kind of like stack them on top of each other. This just feels like very Lana to me, which I love that. Let's go. That's a very real fucking thing to have to talk about, too. It can't get better if I don't get better, right? Honestly, on like a very real note, she did it again. That I mean, that's the easiest way for me to just like sum this up. She did it again. Sour is such a fucking amazing album. It's monumental. It came out and it just like... She fucking came out on the scene with a banger album. Like that... <laughs> To try to have to do that again is so fucking hard. So I will tell you, Olivia, time does get like things do get better as time goes on, as things grow, as things age. Judging by one album to two albums, you're definitely growing with it. So I think you're going to be fine. This is such a great album because you get to see a lot of sides to her. And before I talk about the entire concept of this album, I just want to say, like, I love that we got so much variety when it came to the alt rock space, the 
you know, sort of like grunge kind of sound that I know she loves, 90s rock, all that stuff. But we also got those ballads from her, which personally, I could take like, she could put an album out that's like nine, like full on like death metal songs. But as long as like the other nine songs were all ballads, that would be the perfect harmony for me because she has so many sides to her um, and so many different influences musically that I would hate for her to come out and only do the one thing as much as I would love it in the sense that like, it'd be fucking great. I just, it would be like boxing somebody in that doesn't need to be boxed in. She give her like all the creative control that she wants because she obviously knows the direction where this should go. And it's incredible. So I'm a huge fan of the vulnerability of this album. That's something that like she's great at anyways from the beginning, but it's doubled down on this one. And I think that the term or the, the album name guts really is representative of what this is. It takes guts to be this vulnerable. And at the same time, you're really showing your guts here. We're getting all the insides here. And I think that there's a lot of beauty in that. I think a lot of people are going to find this album to be extremely relatable. You can tell that Olivia is going through a lot emotionally in a lot of this, not only from past relationships and all those things, but also from just understanding where her life is now versus where it was before she was putting out, you know, this major album and breaking all these records. Like, there's a lot to go with here, but the biggest thing that I notice is it's almost like every battle she's got is really going on in her own mind. When I think about logical, when I think about get him back and how those went together or like love is embarrassing, which is the same thing. She's dealing with something in her head of how she's treating this relationship that she's in uh, goes back to making the bed. I just feel like there's a lot going on in that sort of like, um, like storyboard of that, of those pieces. And I think it really comes to life in this. So I appreciate that vulnerability, especially on songs like Pretty Isn't Pretty and Teenage Dream, where it's not just about, you know, internal conflict with relationship, but now you're having to deal with internal conflict with yourself, your own success, your own value as a human, how you feel, how you look, what you think people are going to think of you. All of that really plays into a big piece of this here. And I think Olivia really touches on that in an amazing way. She's an amazing vocalist, hands down. One of the best things about her music is her vocals, the vocal style, different approaches that she takes. And throughout this album, we got to see a lot of that beauty come to life, a lot of that emotion. Again, I'm just hooked on the idea that we got these like huge songs as singles. It, well, even Vampire had the ballad feel to it a little bit. So you kind of knew what you're going to get, but it was just incredible to get to hear all of these ballads coming to life and man, the bridges in these are just top notch. The one thing that I will say, I'll be interested to know when get him back becomes a single because it's literally made for it. And I do want to point out one more, the grudge. There's a lot going on in that song. I definitely want to listen to it a few more times to really understand it, but God damn, like I could hear like the shakiness in her voice, that like little tremble, that little bit of like, emotion trying to come up but you're holding it back because you want to perform the song like that's all happening so real on that fuck so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed this subscribe to the channel i'm almost at 300,000. numbers don't matter but it is kind of cool kind of a cool milestone so i'm stoked make sure you guys check out patreon full uncut album reaction so this entire thing which is about like it's like an hour long it will be over on patreon it's probably like 20 minutes on youtube so if you guys want to check that out links in the description as well as my documentary to her behind the album of sour sour prom sour uncut album reaction so much cool shit yeah so i love you guys i will see you all in the next one peace